Say Fred Bates. <laughs> And very few of them said anything true. We have been apostate for a long time. There was very little going on when I was young. It just that it wasn't. Charismatic movement was just getting started back then. I'm going to read to you some of our emails. I got a couple of emails. They usually like me. And uh, and then I've got some YouTube comments, and most of them don't like me. Uh, but uh, email, Tony Brown writes from Highly, England. Hi, Jim, brothers and sisters at Grace and Truth Ministries. I'm studying the birth of Christ to help with witnessing this holiday season. Well, this is not a holiday season. It's an unholy day. I don't understand the star in the east. Is the star in the east a real star? I believe that it was. Or is it metaphorical? No, the wise men saw the star. They were over here in Babylon. 
Now, the funny thing is, they're over here. They're over here on the Euphrates River. When they see the star in the east, we don't know where it was shining from. They're in the east, and they had to travel all the way over to Jerusalem, about 650 miles. They didn't get there the night that he was born. The Bible says in the second chapter of Matthew, when they came to the house where the young child was, he was a child in a house, approximately two years old. We know that because Herod gave an edict to kill all the children from two years old and onward under according to the time where the wise men diligently applied, uh, diligently inquired, where he diligently inquired of the wise men, what time the star appeared. So it was t at least two years before. And he was just a boy living in a house, a little kid. Now, then I got an email from Ann Nichols in the United Kingdom, uh, same place he's from, maybe not the same town, but United Kingdom means everywhere where the Queen, where they give allegiance to the Queen. That would be Scotland, Ireland, England, uh, everything right there, Wales, and then Canada, Australia, and a couple of the Caribbean islands uh, that gives allegiance to the Queen. Ann Nichols writes, I saw an earlier video where you mentioned 144,000 where demons were concerned. I was unsure about your interpretation even though you mentioned the clinic and strong, so I just put it on the back burner. Well, demon comes from demonion, meaning to distribute fortunes. That was man's imagination, demons. They called their gods by the title of demons in the first century. The Jews did. The Arabs called their gods by the title of genies. They were the same thing. You got your wishes from a genie. You got your wishes from demons. <clears throat> And the 144,000 is the church. It's a figurative term for the church. The Bible says so. It's 144,000 of those that are redeemed, and they're the first fruits of his own will beget he us that we might be a kind of first fruits. However, I have found the scripture, Deuteronomy 32, 16 through 18. This scripture states, False gods are demons. If they're false, they're not real. <clears throat> and I'm sure it covers superstitions too. I'd like to see the scripture that backs up what has been said. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, 16 through 28. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. That's what the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians says. They offer their sacrifice to Daemonion, which means to distribute fortunes. To gods they knew not. These are not real gods. How many gods are there? One. One. So they're offering sacrifices to their imaginary gods. People, demons are an excuse so people can... Uh, have their way. That's what they want is have their way. Uh, that way they don't have to repent. And then J.F. Nantel writes a good lengthy, let me read some of this. Dear Jim, I recently watched one of your videos. I hope you won't mind. I would like to share my thoughts regarding some things you said. I was interested about the topic of the two witnesses. I like hearing you say that you believe we, the church, are the two witnesses. I didn't say that. God said that. God said the two witnesses are the two olive trees that stand before the Lord of the whole earth. They're the two anointed ones. There were two that were anointed in the Old Testament, the priest and the king. And God hath made us priests and kings. Then Revelation 1 and 6. So we're the priest and the king. We're the two olive trees. We're the two witnesses. We're priests by offering our bodies a living sacrifice. We're king by pronouncing righteous judgment. However, I was taken aback when you said you believe that a thousand years 
had to mean 2,000 years. That takes a long explanation. Primarily because Jesus should be slaying all of his enemies at his return. That's one of the reasons. For that reason, no one but the church would be left for him to rule over during the 1,000 years, except it's not 1,000. It's kilia. When you see a 1,000 years, a is not in the text. Indefinite articles are never there. A and an. You have to go by the context. The context is when Christ puts one foot on the land, the other on the sea, and it says time is no more, at the sounding of the seventh trumpet, the last trump, there in Revelation 10 and 7, he also says, with his foot on, one on the land, the other on the sea, he says, time is no more. So at the sounding of the seventh trump, time is over. There can't be a thousand years. Is a thousand years. Is that, is that time? Yep. Well, yeah, it is. The reason he's bound for 2,000 years so he can't deceive the nations anymore. The reason is 2,000 is the word nation is the same word as Gentile. It's the word ethnos. One place where the Gentiles can't be deceived. From Acts 2 to the end of time, that's 2,000 years. And it has to be 2,000 years. Because the only place the Gentiles can't be deceived is the Gentile church, the spirits in prison that God brought release from prison. Right? You know, that is real simple. I don't know what well, nobody else has ever seen it. I'm not talking real in-depth theology. I'm talking the end of time comes when he puts one of them to put on the land, the other one sin says time is no more at the signing of the last or the seventh trump. We're going to be changed at the last trump. You got seven trumpets in Revelation 8, 9, and 10. Do y'all understand that? Yep. That's not even hard, is it? If you don't understand it, you're trying to double think of the way these preachers talk. Don't listen to those guys. I didn't listen to them when I was young. My father would preach preacher of rapture, premillennialism, and I'm a little boy, 11 and 12 years old, saying, I don't understand that. That doesn't make sense. And you know what? I was right. It didn't make sense. Please forgive me if I don't get what you said correctly, but that's what it sounded like to me. You then said, you went on to say, or you might have said before that you believed the King James Version could certainly have mistakes not could have mistakes. It's got mistakes all through it. The true text is the textus receptus, the Greek text of the Scripture. I go through and find mistakes in the King James Bible all the time. You cannot properly translate Greek into English. For one particular reason, every word, you've got many ways to spell them depending on where it is in the sentence whether it's singular or plural, whether it's masculine, feminine, or neuter, gender. You got 24 ways to spell V. Does that matter? Yeah, it matters. You got 27 ways to spell agathos, good. We know that all things work together for good. What are we going to do about it? I had one guy used to come here years ago. He said, and we're going to have to look up all the Greek words. I said, I'm going to look up all of them I can until I die, and then I'm going to leave it up to you, okay? <laughs> I'm going to look up all of them I can. When things look like they're confusing, they are. And it's because with the English language, we have a confusion of languages. I mean, look at the word tongue. You've got two words that have been translated from Greek to English, gloss and dialectos. They're not the same word. Does that matter? Well, what are we going to do about it? Nothing. Just keep translating words. and we're, I'm just a little peon in the world's viewpoint. I'm just a little bitty nobody. God's going to take the base things of the world. The agonies comes from gene and the alpha primitive. It means no noble bloodlines like me to to confound the wise. 
because I'm willing to look up these words, not just in a Strong's Concordance, but in an interlinear Bible and then look up the part of speech. I don't know any preachers that are willing to do that. That preacher you talk to ain't willing to do that. Be sure and give him those DVDs. Give him some of those tracks. I'll bet she's heard about me. What do you bet? They say, this crazy guy's on TV is saying, I'm not crazy. He's crazy. This was a reference to your description of how the word thousand and so forth. You're very confused. I'm not going to read the rest of it. It goes on for a whole page. If you want to call me, call me and we'll talk about it, okay? And then I got these comments on YouTube. Michael Nietzsche writes, he's our representative over in North Carolina in Charlotte. He comments on Bible prophecy end of time. No one knows the day nor the hour. It is said that the damned are in hell because they hate one another. They certainly can't love one another in hell, can they? Ain't no love there. And the saints are in heaven because they love one another. Thank you, Michael. That's about as good as I can put it. Uh, Gerard Miller writes, Jimmy, you can't call me Jimmy unless you've known me 50 years or 60. Okay? <laughs> People here can do that. The aliens are the angels from the Bible. I'm not going to read this. It's goofy sounding. Um, let me read a couple more of these that are short. Charismatic Pentecostal Baptist preachers are insane, irrational, unsound, crazy. And Fubar writes, this is a perfect example of false doctrine. This type of man is spreading false doctrine and doing the devil's work. <laughs> Mr. You are funny. You had never studied nothing. Read the Bible and learn to see what false teachers for what they are, agents of Satan. This man is who is 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 twisting scripture you sir will have to answer for all the twisting of scripture who has spread something in that end of it um, <laughs> foobar you are foobar foolish mike mangrum commented on doctrines of devils billy graham model murray and other false teachers depart from faith. So, Pastor Arnold Murray, Pastor Dennis Murray, whom both teach word-for-word -word scriptures out of King James 1611 Bible are teaching the doctrine of the devil. Arnold Murray didn't believe in an eternal hell. He believed in British Israelism. Yeah, the guy was wacky, but he's dead now. You're calling God a liar. I'm not calling God a liar. I'm calling Arnold Murray a liar. The pastors, Murray, are merely God's messengers delivering his word from his letter to us. When I come across people like you, <laughs> i got to read it like I think they're saying it. I understand the works of Satan much better. You are poorly ignorant. Jesus saves. Doctrine of the devils, vexed with demons and unclean spirits. False. Read the Bible. <laughs> I know these guys have got to be 22 and 23 or maybe 18 and 19. They might be 30 without good sense. Jesus cast them, the demons, out. He taught his disciples to also. He said in Mark 16 that they that believe would also cast them out. Ephesians 6 says that we wrestle with them. Boy, I've got a thousand things to say on Ephesians 6, but I won't say it. I'm not going to read any more of this guy. He's kind of crazy. Uh, Matthew Ginty on atonement baptism babies. Enjoy the sermon, Jim, till you mention Revelation 21. The new earth has no sea, and if the new Jerusalem is simply the bride the church, how can it be measured by a golden reed? 
I've gone through that, and I'm not going to go through that again. Uh, and I got a whole bunch of these. This guy commented, William Comer, about what I said about Arnold Murray. You should be ashamed of yourself. You don't know what truth is. You sound like a beggar. <laughs> they really sound like they've scholared it, don't they? Topper McNabb. Hello there. Would you please let me know if there are any teachings about giving and proper understanding of finance? Yeah, there's a lot. Would you teach on that matter? I've taught on it. I believe that there needs proper understanding of finance. Would you teach on that matter? The tithe is still in effect. Um, I'm not going to read any more of that. That'll be enough. Oh, Debbie Ann, she writes, always got something good to say. Predestination, God is prejudiced, prejudging his elect, innocent. God is a racist. I love this teaching. I've listened to Jim for years now, and no one compares. I've learned so much and would never go back to Pentecostals and the other Jesus. I can't believe I used to believe their claptrap. Like Jim says, you have to read the Bible slowly word for word. I get sent DVDs continually, which really helps me. Never been asked for one single penny. If I give, I do it because the Lord says says it on my heart to do so. Just wish I could come and meet you all one day. There's no question I want. There are many questions I want to ask. That's Debbie Ann. She writes us regularly. Thank you, Debbie. We appreciate it. Love you. All right. Enough said. Okay. Uh, let me give you the announcements. We're on TV all over the country, a whole bunch of towns and cities in Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Beaumont, San Antonio, Austin in Texas, Tulsa, Oklahoma City in, in Oklahoma. We're on the West Coast in San Francisco, Los Angeles, all the little towns around them, we're on up in Chicago, on in Kansas, we're on in uh, all up and down the East Coast, New York City, all the boroughs there, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, Manhattan, the Bronx, and then we're on Boston, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., and we're on down in, uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, and a whole bunch of other places. Uh, be watching for us in your city. We're also on the internet 24 hours a day around the clock. And uh, this is our 3940th DVD. I give away DVDs free of charge. If you want free DVDs, you write to us and say, put me on the list, graceandtruth.com. Net. It's real simple. Or you can call us at 1 800 625 5409 and just say, I want to be on the list. They're free. I don't charge for them. We believe that God's people, uh, God's people will support the ministry if they can. We give away to the poor every month. We give I went out and got sixteen hundred dollars in in uh, cashier's check just about two days ago. Mailed them out yesterday. And uh, if you want to support these needy people, most of them make six or seven hundred dollars a month, and they pay their rent on that, and they they buy groceries on it. And then most of them will have some food stamps. But I don't know how they live on 600 a month. That's just, I don't know. I remember when I was in high school, I, <clears throat> I worked as a sacker in a grocery store, but I didn't need much. And I made 50 cents an hour. How do you like that? And when they raised the minimum wage to, to 75 cents, I thought I'm going to be rich now. But it made enough to buy my shoes and my socks and my underwear and my 
shirts and my jeans and enough to make me get me enough to go to the movie with some girlfriend and uh, I didn't ask for nothing. My father's, I don't mean this in a boast, but my father expected his boys to go to work as soon as they could. So I was always a sacker and a grocer throwing a paper out. And uh, my father hasn't bought me anything since I got my first paper out at 12 years old. Hadn't bought me one thing. Because I was always bought my shoes, socks, everything. And uh, it wasn't a lot of money back then, but I got a job on a assembly line in 1961 making $2. I think it's two dollars an hour, or one eighty-five an hour, plus uh, extra pay for what we put out on the assembly line. And I thought, man, I'm in high cotton now. <clears throat> now I think, what's the minimum wage now? Fifteen dollars an hour? Are they trying to put it to that? Yeah. It's unbelievable. If you made. If you made $15 an hour in 1955, you could buy a new Cadillac and buy your house. But it's, inflation is killing us. If you want to help the needy, make your check to grace and truth and put needy on the bottom of it. And uh, we've got our picnic coming up May the 16th. We're going to be picnicking down here at Rockland Recreation Center, same place we picnic every year we hadn't we don't have a time set for our october chili cookout but we'll be giving you that later September 19th. what September 19th. october the 19th? September, the 19th september the 19th okay why have we got it so early this year all we could get. huh all we could get. that's all we could get okay september the 19th well, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, Jesse, would you pray for us, please? Heavenly Father, thank you for this time to hear your word. Please God, our brother Jim, and give him the, the message and help us learn. Please be with those who are struggling with the word. Give them the strength to do your will. And uh, be, be with the uh, family members that are having issues at this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Two minutes. funny what people write to me and they haven't studied at all. They know nothing about the Greek text, know nothing about gender, masculine, feminine, neuter, gender. I'm just astounded what people say to me. Did the Honor Murray get some of the stuff right a little bit about like he doesn't do the Christmas thing, did he? Who? Arnold Murray, that he's dead. The guy's dead, but did some of the stuff. He is he, dead. He <laughs> the did, guy's dead. He, but he did say that Christmas was up. Oh, well, but he didn't believe in hell. He didn't believe in eternal hell. He believed in British Israelism. I don't know what he believed about Christmas, but he was still crazy. He's a crazy old coot. He had some crazy beliefs. Arnold, he's racist. Huh? Racist? He was a racist. That's right. Of course, British Israelism is racism. 